All right, we're just gonna give we're just gonna give it a shot. <laughs> all right, so now you're all muted. Thank you, because I'm having the difficulties with the recording. If I wouldn't, if you wouldn't mind staying on mute, just so it will keep all this in video, and I can edit it later. If you have Spotify, you want to go ahead and start your Spotify playlist. You can now. Um, I shared it to Facebook. I sent it out. No worries if not. There we go. Okay. So go ahead and come into uh, onto your seat. First, we're just going to work on posture for our chair yoga. Okay. So we want to make sure that we're not super overarching into the low spine. So your arch is at your, um, as you can see, here I'm super rounded or arched through the low back. I want you to lengthen your tailbone down so that you've got a nice tall spine here. Okay. I'll go ahead and take this off. It's just cold in the garage. <laughs> So sit, press down through your sit bones, roll your shoulders into your ears, and then together and down your back. Do that two more times. Shoulders up into the ears, roll them behind your head, squeeze them down your back. One more time. Shoulders up, and then roll them down. All right. As you press down through your sit bones, imagine a balloon inflating at the top of the crown of your head, finding length through the spine and space through the vertebra. Now, if it's difficult for you to sit up straight for a long period of time, and it takes a lot of muscle and strength in the back to do so, feel free to move yourself so that your back is to your chair, the back of your chair. Okay, that's fine. But for as long as you can, try to keep your spine nice and upright. Place the palms of your hands to your quads, and then take your chin gently down a centimeter. Just down. And then with your finger, press your chin back so that the occipital lobe of the head, the back of the skull, goes a little bit behind the spine. Again, trying to reverse this tech neck of this crunching here and rounding forward. We're trying to find that natural alignment of the spine. You can close your eyes. You can leave them gently gazed in front of you. Take your right ear to your right shoulder and breathe. Lift your chin slightly towards the sky and feel the top of the left tre trapezius and the SCM muscle of the left and the side of the neck open just a little bit. If you'd like a little more, you can take your right fingers above your left ear and add just a little bit of pressure, not a lot, just a little, to find a deeper stretch through the upper trap. And then gently take your head back to center. Roll your shoulders into your ears together and down your back three times to reset the spine. And then it lengthens through the crown of the head. Take your left ear to your left shoulder and breathe. Lift your chin slightly towards the sky. Not a big movement, just a gentle tilt. And if you wanted to add a little more pressure, right fingers right above your right ear and gently guide the head down. Rather than pulling it, we're just adding that gentle little bit of pressure. So we get a little more through that space. And if you have the Spotify playlist going, this is one of my mom's favorite artists. It's not. <laughs> John Denver, yeah. All right, go ahead and take your head back up to the center. Draw your chin to your chest for a moment. Keep sitting up nice and tall. And then the head back to center. All right. Close your eyes. Let's find some smooth breathing. I forgot to add that to the first part. Big breath in through your nose. Open mouth, exhale. Inhale through your nose as deeply as you can. And then huge open mouth, exhale. One more like that. And open mouth, exhale. Try to maintain this breath throughout this next few moments of practice. If you'd like to use circular breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth, you can. If you'd like to use yogic breathing in through the nose, out through the nose, you could do that too. It's really up to you at this point. So go ahead and take your arms up overhead like you're in a mountain pose. There you go. So let's talk about shoulder stabilization for a moment. Notice if I just reach as tall as I can, my shoulders come way up and I'm crunching into the neck. Can you draw your shoulders down so we activate and stabilize through the shoulder girdle? Pull down. There it is. Now, holding your hands overhead might be a little bit difficult. It can be. I'm starting to shake a little bit myself. If you ever need to take your hands down for any reason, feel free. But we're going to keep this up for another couple seconds as we breathe smoothly and calmly. 
And then take your shoulders, your hands out in front of you in shoulder and height. That is what it is. Notice if you reached forward and you started around through the upper spine, go ahead and take your shoulders down and back and try to lengthen the spine one more time. Act as if you're squeezing a block between your hands and feel all your arm muscles engage. So isometric hold, squeeze in. Keep that same engagement. Arms overhead, shoulder girdles, shoulders stay down. And then go ahead and take them forward in shoulder height with your breath now. Inhale, arms high. Exhale, arms forward. Again, inhale, arms high, shoulders down. Exhale, shoulder height. Okay, go ahead and release. Give your hands a little shake. See, that's even intense for me. My shoulders start to ha ah, because I'm super engaged. Now go ahead and take your hands into prayer. Interlace your fingers. And then press your palms out in front of you for a wrist stretch. Once more, shoulder stabilization. Roll your shoulders down your back. And hug your armpits down towards the earth. Good. Now gently release. Make a fist with your hands. Roll your fists both directions. And another good wrist stretch for me that I enjoy. Let me know if you like it later. Hands to prayer. And then take your hands, uh, pinkies touch, palms face towards your face. And then your fingers down, back of hands together. And then come up the back side so the palms face forward and then back to prayer. Do that a couple more times so we get the hang of it. I know it's a little confusing. So palms together, open the palms towards your face. Slide the backs of your hands together, pull away from you, palms face open, and then back. One more time on your own, pressing the backs of your hands together once you get to the bottom, and actively pressing your hands together at prayer when you get to the top. We'll try it the other direction. So palms face open, thumbs touch, roll the backs of the hands together, fingers towards your face, back to prayer. Two more times. Palms open, down, backs of hands together, Palms open towards face, back to prayer. One more time. Just opening through the wrists. There you go. And then release, shake it out. Slowly, slowly, slowly. And then come back to your nice, strong seat. See if you can lift your core towards your spine. Find activation there. And notice how when you lift your core into your spine, your low back kind of neutralizes there, okay? Not nice, long spine here. Good. Take your arms up overhead. Shoulder blades down your back. That's it. Interlace your hands behind your head. Elbows wide. I call this butterfly arms. Whatever you'd like to call it, you can. Before moving anywhere, push your head into your hands, your hands into your head. And feel the back, neck, the neck muscles on the cervical spine get nice and strong. So find that hug and that push. And then can you squeeze your elbows down towards the earth? Did you feel your shoulder girdle engage there? I hope you did. Roll it down. Inhale, lengthen through your spine. Exhale, right elbow towards the earth for modified half moon. I'll swing around to the front to show you what that looks like. So we're not crunching on the right side. We're lifting up and out of the left hip and hugging the right elbow down. Once more, shoulders down your back as you press your heart forward, but your low back is avoiding the overarch. So press your sit bones down into your chair. Inhale, come back up to center. Exhale, half moon variation to the left and breathe. Notice if you press your left shoulder way forward, can you draw it back in line with your right hip? On the inhale, lift up and out of the spine. On the exhale, it's a gentle hinge to the left. Good. Inhale, come back up to center. Arms tall. Exhale, server arm. Shoulders roll behind you. Elbows as if they just, they're going to touch behind you and breathe. So we're not really looking for a back bend here. This might be enough opening through the heart. Just roll the shoulders out. Squeeze your elbows behind you. Palms face up. Yes, Sarah. And if you want to look up, you can. Just make sure you're, we're not dropping the head all the way back and crunching into the cervical spine, like Liam does all the time, right? When we're kids, we just throw the head back. Why don't you stay nice and strong? Inhale, come up, mountain pose. Exhale, forward fold. Now, this might be a little tricky. So take your hands to your quads and begin to hinge forward. It might be a lot. It might be a little. But the way you determine if you've gone too far is if you feel any pulling in the low back, if you feel any discomfort in the low spine. Draw your chin to your chest. Nod your head yes and shake it no. 
Inhale, find a halfway lift and pause. So for today's class, halfway lift can look like hands to shins, hands to quads, if you've been in any other class, you know that back needs to be flat and your core engaged. So use wherever your hands are to push your heart forward to flatten through the spine. Yeah. Feel your low back engaged. Nice, Monica. Hug your elbows in if you can. Exhale, forward, fold, release. Inhale, chair mountain. <laughs> Arms up overhead is what that means. Shoulder girdles down. Exhale, interlace hands behind your head. Inhale, lift through the spine. And exhale, right elbow down for modified half moon. Navel to spine, low ribs flare, or don't flare in, they pull in. Inhale, come back to center. Exhale, up and over to the left. Keep the arch out of your low back. Inhale, center. Reach your arms tall for mountain. Exhale, fervor arm. Externally rotate the shoulders and the shoulder blades behind you. Elbows hug towards one another. Breathe here just for a moment. Let's talk about this. So we're constantly hunched over. Just standing up straight and our rolling, rolling shoulders behind us can feel a lot like a back bend. So be really patient, really easy with yourself. And just allow this to happen subtly, not forcefully. Inhale, mountain pose. Exhale, forward fold, hands to quads if you'd like. You might come down just halfway. You can come down all the way if you'd like. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine, pull your navel in. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise, arms overhead. One more time through our modified sun A. Exhale, interlace your hands behind your head. I'll come over to the side of the Inhale, lengthen, reach your head high. Exhale, half moon variation to the right. Inhale to center. Exhale up and over to the left. Both sit bones anchor down. Inhale, center, arms reach tall. Exhale, server arm, roll the shoulders behind. Flare your fingers wide. Maybe look up. Inhale, arms tall. Exhale, forward fold. You choose the depth, what's comfortable in your body today. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold. Inhale, arms high. Use your core to support your spine on the way up. Exhale, lateral twist to the right. So I'm going to scoot this way and show you. Practice your arms for a lap pull, and then guide your heart over to the right and breathe. So rather than just hanging out and just chilling, keep the elbows hugged down to activate the side body, yes, and the shoulder girdle, right? Notice if your right hip opened, can you draw your hips back in line towards the front of the room? Notice how the low back really wants to arch here. Lengthen through the low spine. Get heavy through the tailbone. Shoulders hug down, elbows hug down. Inhale, arms high. Exhale, lateral twist to the left and breathe. We'll, get, we'll have an opportunity to get a little deeper here later. So for this first part, just explore without pulling yourself to rotate. We're just using the strength of the muscles to rotate around the spinal column. Oh, look what happened. My low back arched. I have to bring it back down. Navel engaged. Hug your elbows down. Inhale back to center, arms tall. Exhale forward, fold, hands to quads, hinge nice and slow. Inhale, halfway lift, navel to spine. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair mountain. <laughs> I'm going to get confused. Arms overhead. There you go. Take your hands to your knees. We'll work through a figure four pigeon variation. If there's any pain at all in your knee, at all in your hip, please modify. We can talk about it later. I don't want you to hurt yourself if there's anything resonating as pain. Probably a bad thing. Not bad. Just it's your body telling you to listen. So for this, go ahead and hug your knee up. So interlace your hands right below the kneecap and pull your knee towards your chest. Now, it doesn't have to be this huge lift. It can just be a little bit. So hold here for a moment, thinking about pulling the greater trochanter of the femur, so that's the hip bone. The, hip, uh, the femur head looks like this, and this part goes into the hip socket. We're actively pulling the head of that bone into the hip socket. Flare your right toe. Okay, Trish. Pull it in, hug it in, and then take it into a figure four. So flex your right foot first, grab the knife edge of that foot, hug your right calf towards you, and take your right ankle onto the top of your left knee and breathe. 
So, yeah, feel free to grab onto a chair, or you can do this standing. If your right knee is way up, that is okay. It's totally fine. We're just working to find a stretch through the right outer hip. So however you need to do that, maybe light pressure onto the knee. Maybe you feel it already with your ankle being on top of your quad. That's okay. The one non-negotiable is that your right foot is flexed towards your knee, okay? So from here, once again, align your hip tips, same direction, lengthen the tailbone down, and grow tall through the crown of the head. So this is your pigeon variation, right? You're doing it. Breathe. Either in through the nose, out through the nose, in through the nose, out through the mouth. But do make sure the breath is smooth and the inhale is max, match the exhale. All right. Go ahead and gently grab your right knee. Pull it into your chest. Here comes the fun part. <laughs> Extend your right leg out long. Yep, one leg chair mountain. You've got it. Hold. Navel to spine, low ribs down and in. If you're standing, I see you. You can take your knee to a 90 degree angle, okay? But feel that right hip flexor engage, right? Helping complement that pull of the greater trochanter into the hip socket for four. Flex your right toes for three. Foot down to the ground, two, and gently place it down one. Yeah. Little self adjustment. You can take your right elbow into your right quad and just kind of roll it out. I just got back from a run that was a little gnarly, a little intense. So go ahead and pull your left knee into your chest. Flex your left foot already, right off the bat. Notice if you put more weight into your left hip when you did that, can you re-anchor your right hip down? I'll go ahead and move over here so you can see me. There we go. Flare the toes, hug it in. And then flex your left, re-engage your left foot. Grab the nice edge of that foot. Grab the flesh of your left calf, pull it up, and that'll help you externally rotate the left femur. And then the left ankle comes to the right upper quad or lower quad, pardon me. So remember like on the first side, it can be way up here and that's okay. As long as there's no pain in your knee, all right? Gently find the same um, sensations that you did on the first side. So whether if it was intense on the first side, a healthy intent, go ahead and try to match that best you can. Remember, left toes stay flat, all right? And breathe. Think about squeezing your left inner thigh towards your right leg and your left heel towards your groin to keep that engagement. So every yoga pose is about flexibility and strength. So we're finding flexibility through the left outer hip. We're finding strength through the inner line of the left leg. Same time, it's about balance, right? Keep you nice and balanced, hopefully. All right. Huge, even breath in and a breath out. Hug your left knee into your chest. Flex your left toe. The fun part. Extend your left leg long or 90 degree angle. Right? Hips are level. Shoulders over hips best you can. Feel your left hip flexor. Keep breathing. When we don't breathe, we miss a lot of benefit of the pose. For four. Yes, you can. Three. For two. And one, gently place your left foot down. Feel free to give yourself a little shake. Maybe a little elbow rub. Yeah. Whatever you need to do there. All right, so we're gonna to begin to stand. So go ahead and find the back of your, actually, the front of your chair. All right, this is a variation of Sun B. Do what you can. Of course, if you would not, you don't wanna use the chair, feel free to move away from the chair, totally fine. Um, but we'll go through our warrior poses and we'll add on a little bit at the end. So this might be a little awkward, bear with me. No one's watching here at home. Uh, so go ahead and grab the back of your chair and I, the way I do it, I come and I straddle the chair first to start. Then we'll start with the right side. So right toes port, point away from you. Left toes are either parallel or they're pointing 45 degrees to the upper left corner of your room. Now, if this is enough right here, totally fine. You can even walk your left foot in. This is a warrior stance. If you want a little more, you're used to practicing standing up. You can play around with the length of the left foot behind you. Now, take some time to find your pose, but what I look, would like is your right um, hamstring, maybe even a little bit of your right inner knee to touch the chair. So that's gonna give you idea of alignment through the knee. It's also gonna give you an opportunity to kind of sit down for a moment should you need, just giving you kind of some options through your, um, through your warrior stance. Squeeze your heels towards one another, and then maybe bend and straighten into your right leg if you have the space. 
but do make sure your right knee is right over the ankle or the ankle is forward of the knee. One more thing before we add on. Make sure your knee is not bowed in or out. It's stacked oh, kind of over the middle toe, yeah? Squeeze your heels together. Now we're ready to add the upper body. Arms long to each side. Now, take a peek at your hips or take your hands to your shoulders. If you've noticed you're hinged forward or you're hinged back, go ahead and work to get your spine nice and long, shoulders over your hips. There you go. Now think of your shoulder stabilizers, shoulders down. Squeeze your fingers together, look over your right hand. Now we're in our warrior. Are you breathing? Inhale. And exhale. Put that on. Inhale, reach forward, a little bit or a lot, and then tick-tock your arms six and 12. Find your breath. So this is our extended side angle pose. Continue to press the left knife edge of your foot down, the right big toe mound. Why I love this chair variation is you can push your hand into the seat of the chair to find a little more lift, a little more support. You can also take, if you can stay long through the side body, your right forearm to your right thigh, but this just feels much better. Feel free to put your fist down. Now, stay strong through the legs, squeeze your heels together. Your left butt cheek should be engaged, so squeeze and hug in, navel to spine. If you'd like a little more, you can begin to roll your left shoulder back. Maybe look at your left hand. Still breathe. <laughs> All right. One more breath out. Inhale, five-pointed star. So it's, use your chair to help you. I'm going to show you how to use the hair. Hands to the chair, left toes out, heel in, right toes out, right heel in, and then come up, arms overhead. Now this is a pose, so hug your inner thighs into the chair, find activation through the inner thighs. Arms up, remember shoulders stabilize. Maybe you look up, another breath in. Exhale, warrior two to the left. So begin to adjust your feet or take your hands to your chair and let the chair kind of help you here. Remember, it's your warrior. If you'd like it nice and short, feet together, you can. If you'd like to walk your back foot back, absolutely. Just remember, left hamstring, lightly connecting or a lot of connecting to your chair, that's fine. Check in with your feet. Left toes pointing forward, right toes are parallel to the back of your mat if you have one. Or just make sure the toes are not pointing out. <laughs> that's more of what I should have said. Navel to spine, lengthen your tailbone down towards the ground. Is your right butt turned on? Is your right butt cheek engaged? That's better. Squeeze into your left outer hip. Arms extend to each side of the room. Roll your shoulders down your back. Check in with your shoulders. Are they over your hips or as close as you can? You might need to surf the upper body forward and back. There you go. Hug your shoulders down. There's a lot of work just to hold them. Ooh, keep breathing. Inhale. Exhale, extended side angle. Reach, 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 reach. And then the arms go north and south. Breathe. Feel free to use that chair. That's what it's there for. Give yourself a little check. Can you feel your muscle press into the chair? We want that engagement, right? Or a mind-body connection. Squeeze he left heel towards right to find engagement through the hamstring, right? Maybe you find that a little assist with the left hand. You guide your right shoulder open. Plug your right arm bone into its socket. Breathe. The song, you can call me Alice from a dad. I don't know if he has the Spotify, but that's for dad. <laughs> Exhale all your air. <sighs> Inhale, five-pointed star. Feel free to use your chair and negotiate. Maybe duck walk, heels in, toes out. Find your star. Squeeze. All right. We'll flow through that two times. If you'd like to move away from your chair, you can. Just make sure you find enough distance between your feet each time and we'll go kind of slow so you'll have that opportunity to kind of settle in and find where you find most engagement right I'll do it on my chair it's good practice okay inhale star pose heels in toes out exhale warrior two to the right so right knee bends find that adjustment take your time we're here for a little bit squeeze your heels together press down through the big toe mound low ribs down and in fingers are active and engaged Inhale, reach forward, long side body. Exhale, extended side angle. Find the variation you prefer. A moment to adjust. Inhale, five-pointed star. Negotiate if you have that chair. 
Exhale, warrior two, left foot, left knee bend. And then I'll have to kind of negotiate on this side a little bit more. There we go. A little more time to find every muscle engaged to find your breath nice and smooth. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, extended side angle. Use your left hand for support if you'd like. Roll your right shoulder down, maybe gaze up at your right hand. It's really about what feels good in your neck. So if you're like, ah, oh, it's cranking up to gaze at your right thumb, don't worry about it. You can look forward, you can look at your left foot. Inhale, star pose. One more time through, yes, you can. Exhale, warrior two, right knee bends. A little adjustment. My arms are shaking because I'm just squeezing and I'm making sure I'm engaging. No joke. Breathe, right? You've got this. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, extended side angle. Now, for those without the chair, think about lifting, using your obliques to lift, even if you have the chair. Eventually, we're going to take the chair away, and you're going to want to use your obliques to keep you lifted rather than pushing down, okay? Inhale, five-pointed star. Negotiate. Doop, doop. Exhale, warrior two. Left knee back. Take that moment, find that chair, if you've got it. Squeeze your heels together. Press your right inner thigh towards the earth. Notice how that engages your right outer glute. Nice work. Inhale, five-pointed star. We'll add on one more thing. We'll flow one more time. We're going to add a pose, okay? It'll be fun. Feel free to grab your chest. Exhale, warrior two to the right. Enjoy it. It's the last time here for today, right? You're going to do this tomorrow, right? <laughs> Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, extended side angle. Maybe you don't push into the chair this time. Inhale, five-pointed star. Get ready. Exhale, goddess horse pose. Hands to heart center. Bend your knees. All right. So if you don't have the chair, you be careful with your knees, yeah? Make sure your knees are opening, tracking your pinky toes. And if they're not, walk your feet in a little bit more so that the knees stay safe. The only thing I really want you to be aware of is if your knees are bowing in, it's going to hurt the inner knee eventually. So be really careful. Adjust your stance. If you've got that chair, whoop, feel free to sit down and breathe. So y'all without the chair, I'm making you stay there for a moment. Breathe. Feel the shake and brace it. If you're on your chair, try not to pull too much into the inner thigh and groin. If you feel that going on, like I am on the right side, I'm going to go ahead and walk my feet in just a little bit. Okay? It's about subtle sensation, not huge screaming sensation. For y'all without the chair, you... good for you. <laughs> Inhale, five-pointed star. You did it. Exhale, warrior two to the left. Adjust your feet. Take your time. Engage your hands so your arms get strong. Inhale, reach forward. Exhale, extended side angle. Find your, find your pose. Find that breath. Inhale, five-pointed star. One last time. Exhale, horse goddess pose. Sit low. You can wiggle side to side if you'd like. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now, in this posture, we get a lot of strength. We get a lot of anxiety, and I get a lot of anxiety in the brain. It's usually because I've stopped breathing. I'm like, oh, my legs. Maybe focus on the upper body. So we come to hands to prayer so often, and we don't think push to engage because the upper body helps the lower body balance. And we both, when the upper and lower works in unison, it's a little easier to find your breath and to find more strength. So press your hands together, roll your shoulders down your back, and feel your heart light up. Exhale, can you sit a little lower in your goddess pose? Inhale, five pointed star. Exhale, arms down, walk your feet together. Whoo, outer hips. There they are. Shake it out, shake it out, right? As you shake it out, come to the back of your chair. And let's find our first downward facing dog of class. So downward facing dog, even with we're on the floor, especially on the chair, we're going to want that shoulder stability. So if you find yourself unhinging through the shoulders and you're up here, rethink shoulder stability, shoulders down. Activate through your lats and your serratus interior. So I'll show you. Feel free, if you're familiar with down dog, to move in a downward facing dog. For those who are like, what? I'll show you what it looks like. A little different. So maybe take a four foot step back and you can always adjust. So if you think you need a lot of room and then you don't or if you need more, you can adjust. So we're going to take our body to like a number seven. So think of this as a forward fold variation. I'd like you to bend your knees a lot. 
I have to walk back just a little, all right? Now, I'm not engaging my shoulders, and I'm just hinging down. Maybe you don't see that difference between this and this. But I'll tell you the difference is, if I'm not engaged, these muscles right here, are the tendons and muscles right there are overstretched and they're not safe. So let's all try downward facing dog together, all right? Try not to grip the chair with a light knuckle grip. You can grip lightly or you can take your wrists over the edge. It might be a little better that way. Bend your knees and allow your heart to melt through the shoulders. Now, shoulders down your back, whoop, there's that engagement. It's gonna keep you nice and safe. And then if you're like, I don't feel anything through the hamstrings, maybe begin to straighten your legs. And if you're like, I still don't, you can walk your feet back again. All right? Breathe here. You can allow your chin to come to your chest. If you begin to feel dizzy, come back up, but use your core too. Maybe begin playing around with straightening um, through the legs just so long as you don't feel pulling behind the knee. If you feel too much pulling there, really please bend your knees a lot, a lot. Now, can you engage your core? Lift your pelvic floor, navel to spine, and notice how your low back neutralized when you did that. Maybe play a little game later. When you find the engagement of those muscles, notice what happens in the low spine. Just a couple more breaths here. All right, prepare to release, navel to spine, walk your feet close to your chair, and then come on up. Ah, shake it out, shake it out. If you were on the ground holding downward facing dog, good for you. Uh, it's a good practice, see how long you can eventually hold that downward facing dog. In a kundalini class, they made us hold it for 11 minutes one time. It was good, it was a good lesson, okay. Now we're gonna come into other, some other standing poses. Uh, most of you may know crescent lunge. So what I'd like you to do is to take your right foot forward, probably like mid, mid line of your chair, and then walk your left foot back. Now this will take a little adjusting too. You might come into this and go, oh, that's too much. You can walk it in, you can walk it further. But what I would like you to do is to bend your left knee quite a bit, okay? Squeeze your inner thighs together, pull your right heel towards the back, so we're gonna engage that hamstring when we do that. And then squeeze your inner thighs together, gently guide your left hip forward. Now, feel free to keep your hands on the chair. You can reach one arm high. You can reach the other arm high, whatever feels best in your body. Breathe, okay? So we bend the left knee a little bit to give the left hip flexor a little bit of a break because if we straighten through this left leg, it might be a lot of undue pulling, especially though if we bend that left knee, the low spine neutralizes. So maybe take a moment and look. So my low back is neutral, nice and long. And then when I straighten my left leg, ugh, there's a little arch. And if you have any low back pain, it becomes a pain over time. Okay, so this next part's an option, not a necessity. You can stay exactly where you are. You can keep your arms up. I see you ladies. Lift your right heel off the ground. Lower your left heel. Uh-huh. Lift it again. Heel higher and then lower. I'm getting warm. One last time. Lift your right heel up. Squeeze your inner thighs together. And then lower your right heel down. Hands to the chair. Walk your left foot up a step. And then left toes are um, open to the left side of the room. I don't know if you can see it. I'll face forward. So I'm on two train tracks. And then my left toes, they're not pointing the same direction as my right toes. They're just out a little bit to a 45 degree angle. Okay. And then go ahead and bend your right knee. Feel free to hold on to that chair. So this is our warrior one. If you'd like your arms high, you absolutely can. But let's focus on the lower body first. There's a lot of discussion around warrior one and for good reason, okay? Um, we wanna keep our back knee safe. So notice, um, you might even feel it. If your stance isn't wide enough, your left knee might be not feeling super awesome. So in that case, Step your right foot out wider. I'll show you my stance here, okay? So here, might be too close. I know that in traditional warrior one stance, it doesn't feel good in my left knee. So I have to take my right foot out so I'm wider stance. I might even need to take my left foot in a little bit. Make sure your left knee is okay because we don't want it crunching. It doesn't really move this way. It goes like this, right? All right, so warrior one, and then your hips, they can be square. If you have a wide stance, you can definitely work on squaring up through the hips. If you've got a more narrow stance, don't worry about the hips being square. It's gonna put undue pressure on your left knee. Just focus on taking your heart 
forward, kind of not squared over your right knee, maybe, but we just want the shoulders nice and square to the front, okay? Arms up or down onto your chair. Breathe. <laughs> You've been here for a while. Let's move forward. Inhale, straighten your right leg. Pyramid pose. Yeah? Exhale, bend your right leg. If you notice any pain in the left knee or it's not feeling good through your left calf, walk your stance even wider. Inhale, straighten your right leg. Exhale, bend your right leg. Inhale, straighten it. And then exhale, bend it. All right. So we're going to take that into a modified pyramid, full modified pyramid, quote unquote. You can walk your chair forward. Inhale, straighten your right leg and breathe. Now, more room to get the hips level, right? So with your hands on your chair or your hands, um, if, you're, if you're not using your chair today, you can take your hands to your right quad. You can take it to your shin. But I really would like you to focus on keeping a long spine, which is why I've got my chair here, okay? I'll show you forward. So imagine I have my chair here. Take your left hip forward and pull your right hip back so that we're nice and square. Yeah, long spine, navel up and in, and your left calf should be feeling really amazing because of all of this stretching through that area. If you've got any Achilles tendon pain, this is one of the cures for that, so breathe through it. Now we're going to add on with revolved pyramid pose. Your left hand stays on the chair, or your left hand can be to the ground if you're not using your chair, but flat spine, okay? Right arm sweeps to the sky and breathe. So if you notice your left hip, so I'll come forward. If you notice your left hip dip way down when you did that, don't follow your gaze to your right hand. Just draw your arm high and focus on staying square through the low body, okay? Your gaze can be up at your right hand. If that hurts your neck, just keep your gaze down, that's fine. Roll your shoulder down, but maybe open your hand behind you just a little bit more. Hug your inner thighs together for stability and pack your outer hips in. We're going to swing our right arm in um, three circles, counterclockwise or clockwise and counterclockwise. Now, it's not a fast motion. It's a nice controlled movement of the arm, yeah? Using muscles to move, make the movement rather than momentum. Rather than swinging the arm, we're using the muscles, right? Last time, and then take it counterclockwise forward. Just opening through the arms through the shoulders, nice. And then arm high, modified revolve pyramid, hands to your chair, let's have some fun. Inhale, warrior three, bend your right knee, lift your left heel up, ooh, there it is. So I'm in a pretty modified variation, which is totally fine. Another way to modify is to keep your left toes to the ground and work on that flat spine. Yes, this is warrior three right here. I'd rather see something like this than you hinge forward and crumpling down, okay? So just try to keep your back flat. And if you'd like to move into a truer warrior three, I don't know if there is as much, um, more traditional, I guess, is gonna be to press your heart forward. And there we go. Now, if you don't wanna use this dang chair, I'm using the heck out of it. You can send one arm forward, bend your right knee, maybe you send your left arm forward, breathe. Left hip comes down, bend your right knee. So we hug muscle to bone rather than dumping into the bone, the hip sockets and the joint, right? Flare your left toes for four. You have three, two, and one. Left foot meets the right. Oh, there it is. Stand up, take it out. Oh. Let's take a um, standing figure four, or you can move back to your chair, yeah? Come back to your chair, hug your knee into your chest and then find that figure four we did seated, okay? It'll give a nice release for your outer hip. If you're standing, right knee into chest, bend your left knee, right ankle on top of left quad, and gently push the knee open. Remember, flare your right toes, protect the knee joint. I don't know if it was just me who needed that after. <laughs> My outer hip was like, whoa! I don't know if that's because I ran or because we were on that leg for too long. I don't know. Feedback welcome after class. All right, gently come out. Good news, we have the other side. All right, let's do it. Crescent lunge was our first one. So go ahead and take your left foot forward, your right foot steps back. All right, crescent lunge. Play around with that motion, play around with your stance to find that degree of where you feel something but not a hard something, right? So nice and medium, right? I'm gonna walk my right foot back just a little. 
And then maybe just for a moment, play with straightening the back leg and then bending the right knee. And notice how, maybe even take your hand to your low back and kind of notice how the low back changes shape when you have the leg straight or when it's bent, right? We want to be nice and aware of that. If you don't have low back problems, probably not a big deal for you, but I'm just offering up what works in my practice because my low back is kind of gnarly some days. And think that the right knee doesn't have to be bent a ton for a double lunge. It can just be a nice little micro bend so that the hips level out, the tailbone lengthens down, and you can get your shoulders stacked over your hips. From here, if you want your arms high, you absolutely can. Shoulder stabilization, stabilization down. All right, nice and tall. And breathe. Hug your inner thighs together. Left hip forward, right hip back. And think about pressing your left heel into the earth like it was sand, like your foot was going to disappear to your ankle. And then squeeze the back heel behind you and feel that your hamstring just went, oh, we need all the muscles working, okay? One more round of breath in your crescent lunge. Nice job. All right. Walk your right foot up a step, maybe out a step. If you knew you took a wider stance for warrior one, do that here. And then press your right heel into the nice edge of foot into the earth. Remember, the toes are 45 degrees externally rotated, right? So we're not here. We're out here. I hope you guys, I hope you all can see that. There we go. And find that place where your right hip flexor is opening. You're digging the knife edge of your right foot into the earth. That's going to help you rotate the right hip forward. All right, here we go. Especially if you run a lot, this is awesome for your calves. Like I said, I'm definitely feeling it. Um, this is even good if you just have plantar fasciitis for many reasons, right? Once the hamstrings, are, hamstrings and calves are super tight, they tend to pull on that bottom um, fascia on the bottom of your foot so then that heel becomes super duper tight so just in case you ever feel that this is an awesome stretch for it i'll stop talking for now <laughs> in your warrior one find your status find your feet find your shoulders your heart forward if you want to lift your arms high you can if you want to keep one down and another one up absolutely you can yep shoulders down your back stay strong through the shoulder girdle upper lower upper Upper body, lower body, all work together for strength through the whole being, okay? All right, hands to your chair. Inhale, straighten your left leg. Look, it's pyramid pose. Exhale, bend your left knee. We forgot the heel raise and crescent lunge on the other side. We will get there. Straighten your left leg. I'm sure y'all are like, no, we don't have to do it. <laughs> to even out, we'll do it. One more time, bend your left knee. Now. Lean into your chair, pick up your right leg, step back to crescent lunge. There it is. <laughs> arms up or arms to your chair. Lift your left heel off the earth. Exhale, lower it down. Our arms can be on the chair. Lift your left heel off the earth. Exhale, plant it back down. One more time. Inhale, lift. And exhale, lower. Ooh. All right, back to your warrior one. So super important to do one, um, with what we do to one side to the other side. But also super important is if you have those plantar fasciitis issues, strengthening the calves will really help. All right, come into that pyramid pose for me. Take your right hip down and forward, your left hip, crest, hip crease pulls up and back. Yeah? Hug your inner thighs together, squeeze through the lower glutes, and find that long flat spine. Okay? Maybe that's with a chair, maybe you're down, touching your hands to your feet, nice Dara, but can you lengthen through the crown of your head for a really long spine? Yeah. All right. Revolves pyramid. Left arm high. All right. So notice there, when I went to gaze at my left thumb, my right hip just dipped down, right? I have to reduce my twist for safety in my low back. So I'm going to try that one more time. There we go. It's less of a twist, quote unquote, but it's fine. It's keeping my low back safe, right? Roll your left shoulder down your back. Three rotations, three circles, counterclockwise, nice and slow, then back up to the high. And again, forward. Can you still squeeze your heels kind of towards one another, catty corner? One more time, lift up, and then take it forward. Three circles. Dig down through the right knife edge of foot and heel. Move your arm with your breath. Last one, breathe in. And then hand down. Bend your left knee. Inhale, warrior three, Whoop. we're forward. There we go. 
So look at this guy. I just noticed I'm way forward. I wasn't straight. So I'm going to go ahead and lower my right foot a little bit. I'm looking for a long line of energy from the right heel through the crown of the head. And if we want, we can hinge it forward a little more or we can lessen. Yeah. So in our warrior three, arms are forward or hands to the chair or toes down, arms up. There we go. Bend your left knee, pack your left outer hip in, recruit your inner thigh for balance. You have three. You've got this. Two, flare your right toes. And one, feet knee. Ooh, bend your knees and straighten your legs. Two more times. Bend your knees. Oh, here's a chair. Chair on chair. And stand. Bend your knees. Stand up. Let's get that figure four on the left side. Either on your chair or standing. Let's do it on the chair. All right, hug your left knee up. Flare your left toes. Guide it across. Ooh, there we go. One side might be tighter, one side might be stronger, one side might be more flexible. And for each pose, they may shift. And one side might be all those things and the other one not so much. That's okay. But we need to pay, they had to pay attention to those differences in the body. It's our first, one of our first steps in awareness, right? There's awareness of breath. There's awareness of sensation in the body. And then once we have those two things, even see a glimmer of those two things, then we can work to kind of regulate them and incorporate them into a more mindful yoga practice. Good All right, go ahead and pull your left knee into your chest and extend the leg down. All right, let's take a sunday. Inhale, arms high, standing or seated, all good. Exhale, hands behind head. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, side body to the right, shoulders down. Inhale, center. Exhale, up and over to the left. Inhale, center, arms, tall, rise high. Exhale, server arm, roll your shoulders behind you, hug your elbows together behind you. Hold. Take the arch out of your low spine. Squeeze your hip tips towards your lower rib tips. Inhale, mountain. Exhale, forward fold. Hands can stay to quads. You can hinge forward if you'd like. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, mountain pose. One more sunday with a little bit of a twist. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Cactus arm twist to the right as you breathe out. Hold and breathe. Here's the part if you want to, if you're in your chair and you want a little more of a twist, and you can keep your right hip forward. You can reach for the chair back behind you to pull. Or if you're not using your chair, you can take your right hand to your low back or closer to your left hip for a half bound twist. And this way, when you have your hands on each hip, I'll show you this side too. We know when we're over twisting in the low back, we can feel that. So it's kind of like a hands-on anatomy lesson, right? So if I, you feel that over twist, right hip came back, guide it forward. Roll your shoulders down your back. All right, gently release, inhale, arm high. Exhale, gentle twist to the left and breathe. So you have your layers, you have your add-ons. If you have a back of a chair, this one's gonna, oh, I did the wrong way. It's, I'll show you anyway. It's going to look like this. We're going to use the back of the chair to help us. Ooh, I just got to snap through the low back. Careful of the overarch. Remember, if you don't have a chair, you're not using your chair, your left hand can half bind to your right hip. Your right hand can come to your left hip. Every twist we do, inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, rotate your left rib cage over. So just keep in mind the twist comes from the bra line, the thoracic spine, and not the low spine. We'll get into a lot of trouble that way. Gently come back, inhale, arms high. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, hands to heart. Come to um, hands at center. We'll work through tree pose. So you can stay seated. We'll show go over in a second. You can come to the back of your chair or without, up to you, okay? So here's a couple layers we'll go through first. Right side, so left toes stay down. Your right toes will be to the floor. Your heel will come to your inner ankle. Your next layer is to take the sole of your foot to the left inner calf, inner calf. And if you've got the space that's something you want to work on, you can grab your right foot and place the foot to the inner thigh. Now, please, if the foot inner, the sole of your foot hit the inner knee, lower it down, okay? If we push into the knee to the side, it's not going to be good. Now, whatever variation, oh, chair variation. I don't know if you'll like it or, or not. 
You can keep your left knee bent. We'll take the left right foot to the inner knee. I have more space if I do it this way. You can hold it right here, okay? So kind of like that figure four, and if you'd like to take another figure four, you can. But use your hand to push your foot into your inner thigh, and then work your right knee open, okay? If you want a little more, you can straighten your left leg. Get that hip flexor going. So for our chair, our tree pose, toes down to calf or inner thigh. Now we can play with our balance. You can take one hand high. Yeah, you can take the second hand high. What I'd like you to focus on is not so much your hands being out of the air, is that you're pressing your right knee open. You're recruiting your right outer hip to make the right um, femur, your leg bone, rotate open, okay? The flexibility is coming from the inner thigh. The strength is coming from the outer hip. Make sure your hips are nice and level, and then lift your heart really high like you were in mountain pose. Another big breath in. Big breath out. There you go. Slowly release your right foot down. Feel free to wiggle it out. And we'll move to the other foot. However you did it on the first side, that's how you're going to do it on the second side, or as close to as you can, okay? So either toes to the ground, heel to your ankle, sole of foot to your left right calf, or drag the foot up. Oop. A little more space needed. And there you go, okay? Problem is when I get my left foot into my right inner thigh, I tend to hike my left hip up to make it happen, and then I'm not pressing my left knee open. So try to find a stance where you're making all of that work at the same time. Nice level hips, left knee presses open. If you have a really tight left outer hip, it might be a little more difficult on the other side, but we're just starting to come into awareness of how the body is different side to side. So it's all good, okay? If you're seated, find your tree. Your arms can be high if you'd like, both of them. Maybe hands to heart center, working the upper body stabilization to help the lower body out. Squeeze into your left outer glute. Use your right leg to push into your left and vice versa. These opposing forces to the midline will help us keep us, help keep us more stable, but it also helps both muscle groups. It also helps the right leg on this side become really defined. That's what I've been told. <laughs> Huge breath in. Then gently release left foot to the ground, shake it out. Standing, sun A. Inhale, arm high. Exhale, half moon to the right. You can take your hand by your side or take that butterfly variation we've been taking all of class. It's up to you. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, up and over to the left. Inhale, center. Exhale, server arm. Roll your shoulders back. Press your hips forward. Inhale, center. Exhale, hands to chair or full forward fold. Feet together, hinge. Inhale, halfway lift, flat spine. It looks a little different with the chair, but that's okay. If you're not using the chair, you know where to go. And then we'll come into wide leg forward fold. So from here, I'll show you. Pretend the chair's here. Heel toe your feet out to a wide stance. Now take about 50% of your, of your capacity, right? So sometimes we're like, yeah, leg is apart, let's do this. And then the problem is we go too far and later we're like, oh, wait, wait, wait. So take about 50% capacity if you can, okay? So maybe that's here and that's totally fine. Maybe it's here, that's fine, okay? So show, uh, hips over ankles. So you're gonna need to come forward just a little bit. I'll come back to my chair here. Now with your feet, feet and hands are part of every pose. Your feet are either parallel to the edges of the room or they're pigeon toed if you have a healthy low back. If you do not have a healthy low back, no judge, me neither, my feet need to stay parallel, okay? Hug your feet towards one another, feel your inner thighs turn off, engage when you do that. So find that squeeze and hug. And then hinge yourself forward using your chair. And do that until you feel a sensation, not in the inner knees, not behind your knees, but to the hamstrings and the inner thighs, okay? If you're using the chair, again, think shoulder stabilization. If you're using the ground, can you keep your gaze where your neck stays long, right? So I'm not rounding super far forward. I'm not craning my neck up. I'm having, I have a moderately engaged head. The cervical spine is in line with the rest of the spine, okay? and breathe. And after a couple moments here, you're like, oh shoot, yeah, I did go too far, or I didn't go far enough. You can adjust your feet, and that is fine. If you want a little more from this posture, go ahead and arc 
your low back gently and feel how when you tilted your tailbone to the sky, it pulled more on the hamstrings a little bit. It pulled more on the inner thighs. So be very careful and re-engage your feet towards one another. So squeeze everything to the midline. And then halfway lift. Heel toe your feet together, little duck walk, or you can take a step. We'll find another forward fold, with or without your chair, folks. Bend your knees, round forward. And then maybe straighten a little bit. And that's a great way to explore where you just open through the legs. So if you bend your knees a little bit and you straighten your legs a little bit, after that wide leg forward fold, you'll kind of feel the area and that blood rush through it. Nice job. Come back up to stand. Shake it out a little bit. Check it out, check it out. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and come on down to our seat for our closing postures. So sit on down. We're back to the chair. Okay. So eagle pose will be one of our final poses. You go as far as you can go, okay? No judgment. No need to push yourself, especially if you've never done something like this. All good. So extend your arms out in front of you. Shoulder stabilization. Roll them down. I will actually face this way so it's not super... So I'm facing the way you're facing, okay? So take your right arm under your left and find a hook, like that, a little hook. And then you can stay right here if that's enough. If you want to, take your left hand to your right shoulder and then your right hand to your right shoulder, okay? I'm gonna come back face front. If you're familiar with Eagle and you wanna take the full bind, you can. So hands kind of touch. Your elbows look like ropes and they're pushing down into one another, okay? Remember, bear hug is fine. If you're in bear hug, if you're in full variation, if you're in beginning variation, what I'd really like you to focus on is the hug down of the elbows towards your belly, okay? Hug your right knee up or lift your right leg and put it over your left, and you can hang out right here. This is actually quite great. We'll stay right here anyway. If you can't find that full wrap, it's a figure four, okay? Remember, flare your right toes for this figure four. Now, inhale, lift your elbows just as little or a lot, as much as you can, and then lower them down. Keep the spine nice and long. So it's an inhale lift and an exhale pull down. One more time, inhale, elbow up, and exhale, hug down. Now, squeeze your elbows and your arms down into your heart like you're cutting off blood flow to the armpits, to the joints right? So the lymphatic, some of the lymphatic system lives under your armpit. And then when we cross the joints like this, we're constricting blood movement through those areas. So when we release, fresh oxygenated blood will be shot through. We're giving the lymphatic system a little, <laughs> hey, you, pay attention. Yeah. All right. So we unleash your, unleash your arms, arms come tall. If you want to grab your right knee and switch it out, you can. And we'll move into the other side. Okay. So Left arm under, I'll face this way. Left arm under the right, cross up the elbows or biceps. Your right arm can stay out. Your right arm can come to your shoulder, your right hand can come to your shoulder, and your left hand can come to your left, right? Goodness. Or find your full bind, okay? But it's left arm under this time. Wherever you are today, totally fine, right? Hug your elbows down. Lift your left leg up and over if you need to give yourself a little help. Feel free to grab it. It's all good. All right, let's talk about the legs in this pose, okay? So we did a lot of upper body. On the lower body, your inner thighs are squeezing towards the midline. So our left inner thigh is squeezed on top of our right quad, and we're pulling in because there's lymphatic system that lives in those areas as well. Also, we're crossing at the knees, major joints of the body, so we'll get some nice fresh blood flow when we unleash, release. On the inhale, lift your elbows. Feel the pull behind your shoulders a little bit, but keep your shoulder girdle down and then hinge forward, just a little movement. Inhale, lift. And exhale forward. One more time. Inhale up. And exhale down. Good. Come back up. Slowly unwind. No slingshot. Arms tall. Hands down. Release your left leg. All right, I gotta take out my wrist. Take another little wrist stretch. Palms together, interlace your fingers, press your palms to the front of the room, pull your shoulders down your back. <clears throat> All right, release. Last pose, I promise. Take your hands to the edges of your seat. It's a bridge pose. If you're not using your chair, come on down to your back. My only rule, if you're on your back and you're in bridge pose, please do not move your neck. You're keeping it 
is keeping your gaze to the sky. When we have pressure on the neck and we move side to side, those delicate cervical spines are not so happy. So feel free to go for it. If you're in your chair, hands to the edges of your chair. Walk your booty close to the edge. A little bit of arm strength here, okay? Stay with me. Walk your feet out a step. Walk, walk, walk. Push down and then lift your booty. Roll your shoulders down your back. So it's like a reverse tabletop, a little bit of a bridge. For four, roll your shoulders back, three. Press down through your heels for two. And one, push into your chair, send your booty back. Nice, Trish. And then there we are. Roll your shoulders. Roll them back three times. Roll them forward three times. Very cool. Okay, come to a seat. Close your eyes for a moment. Nice, tall posture like we did at the beginning of class. Press your head back. Lower your chin. Palms down to your thighs. We'll take three breaths together to seal off this beautiful time we spent together. Inhale through your nose. Exhale through your nose. Do it again. Breathe in. Let it go. One more. Your pace, your rhythm. Nice. Feel free to stay here as long as you'd like. Just finding space in your breath, finding calm in your breath. Otherwise, hands heart center. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for allowing me to experience this new type of yoga. And um, I'm grateful for each and every one of you. Namaste. Thank you.